بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أبنائي وبناتي الطلاب أسعد الله صباحكم ومساءكم وعمركم بكل الخير والسعادة بإذن الله نلتقي مع بعض في هذه المحاضرة نستكمل بها المحاضرات بتاعتنا في مادة International Banks شرح المحاضرة تم يومي الأربعاء والخميس الموافق 22 أبريل و 23 أبريل الماضيين وكما اعتدنا بنسجل المحاضرة لحضراتكم كمرجع يفضل معاكم في الفيديو شرح بالصوت والصورة أتمنى لحضراتكم كل التمنيات بالتوفيق والنجاح وأتمنى نذاكر أول بأول ولو في أي استفسارات أو أسئلة أكيد أنا في انتظارها من حضراتكم سواء على الفيسبوك أو بالإيميل أو على الجوجل كلاس روم أو في المحاضرة القادمة بإذن الله إن شاء الله تسألوني عليها ما زلنا في شابتر 3 Assets and Liabilities Management Basics and Importance وكما اعتدنا بنستعرض الجدول بتاعنا احنا اخدنا يوم اخدنا شيء Introduction on Assets and Liabilities Management اخدناها و Assets and Liabilities Mismatch Rule اخدناها Types of Assets and Liabilities Mismatch اخدناها وشرحنا عنها مسألة المرة اللي فاتت اللي هنتكلم عنه النهاردة ان شاء الله هيكون نقاط اخرى اضافية توضيحية لل assets and liabilities mismatch rule وال types هناخد فيها مسألة تانية وكما استعرضنا في المحاضرة بالتفصيل سنلقي الضوء على اهم النقاط في relationship between asset and liability management and risk management و sources of international banks risks As we used to do, we start our lecture with a revision about what we've mentioned and explained the last week lecture. We mentioned that assets and liabilities management in international banks are exposed to several types of mismatch of assets and liabilities, which can be summarized in three types, currency mismatch, maturity mismatch, and interest rate mismatch. We've mentioned that banks manage the risks associated with assets and liabilities by matching them according to maturity and sensitivity. Asset liability management tries to match assets and liabilities using Two types of analysis, maturity analysis and sensitivity analysis. Regarding the actual basis, through these two types of analysis, maturity analysis and sensitivity analysis, an analysis is made of what is known as the financing gap. We are trying to calculate, to know the financing gap. And we've mentioned that we are we have different types of financing gap definitions according to different categorizing, but we can easily say and know the financing gap that it's the difference in total funding needed in the future and the amount of funding already available or will be available. The difference between total funding needed in the future and the amount of funding already available or will be available. We've mentioned that last, le last lecture using these two words. Financing gap is knowing that we have enough cash in to finance cash out. We have enough cash in to finance cash out. We've mentioned also and explained also maturity analysis in details and we have to remember that in maturity analysis 
the repayment date of a loan from the individuals back to the bank should be commensurate with the date of the desire of another customer who placed a deposit in the bank to obtain his money. So, for example, if someone borrowed from the bank amount of money, the repayment date of this loan plus interest should be commensurate with the date of another customer who previously earlier deposit his money in the bank and want his money back. So for example, if the depositors need his money tomorrow, if the depositor needs his money tomorrow, we have to be sure that there are enough borrowers. There are enough borrowers who is going to pay the loans they received from the bank today. There is enough borrowers who received a loan before from the bank is going to pay today. So I'm going to receive today enough money from this borrower so I can pay the depositor's money tomorrow. That sure must be happen without affecting the bank rule as a financial intermediary. And we have to put in mind that there are many other economic and non-economic variables must be considered. In sensitivity analysis, asset liability management determine the limit and extent to which individuals respond to changes in interest rates and to many variables. In sensitivity analysis, we are trying to know the limit of the responsiveness of individuals when interest rates and many variables are changing because responsiveness of individuals are not the same. They respond in different behavior. And we are not only speaking about responsiveness of individuals. We are speaking also about banks' responsiveness because banks themselves differ in its response to many variables and factors when it changes. For example, central bank policies or when economic fluctuations happened or non-economic variables changes, all these factors and variables affect the banks. So in sensitivity analysis, we are determining, we are analyzing the individuals, both individuals and banks, individuals as borrowers and depositors, and banks, all the individuals who deals with the bank and the banks, we are determining their responsiveness. And finally, we've mentioned that asset liability management to do these types of analysis and to do its function correctly and accurately, the need many information systems, international banks, our interest in information systems at several levels. So through these information systems, asset liability management can make international banks avoid a lot of risks and a lot of negative effects of these risks. What's the type of information that international banks are interested in? They are for information collection system, information analysis and management system, availability of a system to review information and ensure its accuracy, and finally, providing a decision-making systems that helps the bank to follow up on their results and 
to receive enough feedback to correct and to make its function successful. And we explained a numerical example about currency mismatch risks. And we can say this conclusion that currency mismatch risks occurs when banks' assets and liabilities are in different currencies and the exchange rate are exposed to unpredicted and unwanted changes, especially in the short term or short run. I have to focus here in this sentence again, again, my dear students. Currency mismatch risk didn't occur because banks' assets and the abilities are in different currencies. No, it's not about that. It's not about that the banks, the international banks' assets and the abilities are in different currencies. No, this is not the problem that the currency is different. The problem is that the exchange rate are exposed to unpredicted and unwanted changes, especially in the short run. And this may cause the bank a currency mismatch risk. And when we re-explain a numerical example today also, in this lecture, you are going to understand this rule more. So again, currency mismatch risk occurs not because the bank's assets and liabilities are in different currencies only. No, it occurs because banks' assets and liabilities are in different currencies and, and the exchange rate are exposed to un unpredicted, to unpredicted and unwanted changes, especially in the short run. We've mentioned here in the previous 10 minutes, a fast revision about what we've explained the lecture the previous week. And let's now start with our new topic today. We must say for the favor of assets and the abilities that some prefer to divide them into several parts and tasks. We've mentioned that banks are exposed to many risks and international banks specifically are exposed to three main types of risks. They are mismatch risks, currency mismatch risks, interest rate mismatch risks, and maturity mismatch risks. We are speaking here about matching assets and liabilities together. And it doesn't mean that assets separately causes some risks and liabilities separately are causing a specific risks. When we spoke about the mismatch risks, we've mentioned that we are matching assets and liabilities together. So in international banks, when we match assets and liabilities together, we are facing the mismatch risks. What if we didn't match assets and liabilities? Are banks exposed to risk? If we didn't match assets and liabilities, are banks is going to be exposed to risks? Yes, because there are different assets and different liabilities in the bank's budget and they can cause sometimes through different circumstances a specific risks. That's what I want to mention here and explain here for you, my dear students. For the favor of assets and liabilities, some prefer to divide them into several parts and tasks to divide assets and liabilities according to different and several parts and tasks. The reason for this is that risks that arise from the asset side 
differ from those arising from the liabilities side. Why the risks from the asset side is different than the risks from the liabilities side? These differences are because of the different nature of assets and liabilities. And as I mentioned in the lecture, the online lecture, is assets, for example, loans, is the nature of loans are the same of the nature, are the same like the nature of certificate of deposit, for example, is investing in different portfolios, is the nature of investing in different portfolios are the same like taking a loan from another commercial bank? The bank is taking another loan from other commercial bank? No. The nature of assets is different than the nature of liabilities. Also, assets and liabilities are different in steps and contain different obligations and requirements. The steps of processing assets is different than the steps of processing liabilities. Steps of giving loans are different than taking or accepting deposits. If I'm going to give a loan for an employee who works in a public sector is completely different than giving it to an employee who works as a freelance or has its own business. Also, accepting deposits are different. We have many types of deposits. We have many types of certificate of deposits. Okay? So, this is what I meant here that the nature of assets is different than liabilities. The steps of processing assets is different than liabilities. A assets contain different obligations and requirements different than liabilities. In general, a lot of risks will be explained and mentioned in detail later in Chapter 4. It's going to be explained in detail later in Chapter 4. But here we are going to shed the light on the main of them. Here we will shed the light on the main and most common types of risks for each and will be briefly explained. We are going to shed the light on the main types of risks from assets and liabilities separately. In general, the risks from the assets are considered to be summarized into these types. Credit risk, investment risks, and risk of selling assets. While for the risks from the liability side, they can be summarized in these types, withdrawal risks and financing risks. Let's try to explain and know each type of these risks separately. The most important risk from assets side is credit risk. What's the meaning of credit risk? Credit risk is the failure of some borrowers to pay their obligations on their due dates. The failure of some borrowers to pay their obligations on their due dates. This may sometimes result in a risk for the bank cash flow or a risk of declining profits. If some borrowers didn't pay on time, so the bank here may face 
a decreasing in the planned cash inflows. He expected to receive, for example, in April, an amount of money, a specific amount of money. And because there are some borrowers didn't pay their obligations on their due dates, this cash inflows didn't happen accurately. So, credit risk affects the cash inflows for the bank and it may affect the profits of the bank. Credit risk, again, is the failure of some borrowers to pay their obligations on their due dates. And this may sometime result in a risk for the bank cash inflows or a risk of declining profits. Also, there are many investment risks, different investment risks arises from the asset side. Simply, they are summarized in the fact that the bank may face a decrease in the value of some investment assets compared to its book value. So, for example, if the bank bought some securities and for some reasons, for some economic reasons, economic fluctuation, the stock market is a beer market. The prices in general is decreasing. In this case, the securities value that the bank bought is decreasing. So the bank is now facing an investment risk because the value of the assets the bank own is decreasing. The value of the assets the bank own is decreasing. So when a bank face a decrease in the value of some investment assets compared to its book value, the bank here is, face, is facing investment risks. If this decrease in the assets value continued and leads to a decrease in the assets value in the budget, the bank is facing investment risks. Okay? So we have different types of investment risks. Simply here, to know it, we are speaking about a decrease in the value of investment assets. And if this decrease continued for a specific time and leads to a decrease in these assets value in the budget, the bank is facing investment risks. Finally, due to the two preceding risks, the bank may be forced to sell some assets. For example, the bank may be forced to sell some securities in the short term or other fixed assets in the long term. Why the bank is going to sell these assets? Why the bank is in need to sell some assets? Number one, in the event of an emergency liquidity crisis, the bank needs some liquidity for any event. Okay? In this case, the bank is forced to sell some assets. And maybe when it sells these assets, its value is not the same as it borrowed, it, it, it buy it, sorry. Maybe in the time of selling the assets, it's not 
with the same value like it buy it number two maybe the bank is forced to sell some assets because of the macroeconomic pessimistic expectation regarding the value of the assets in the future okay maybe the bank through the different information systems he used is having a prediction that the economic the economy is facing some problems in the future we are having a macroeconomic pessimistic expectations in this case the bank should sell these assets before its value decreases more in the future so when the bank when the bank sells some assets to have the required liquidity or to reduce the loss that may occur in the future when the bank is forced to sell some assets to have the required liquidity or to reduce the loss that may occur in the future these risks represented as a selling assets risks or risks of selling assets because when the bank sells these assets its value may be decreasing so we spoke here about three types of assets risks credit risk investment risks and selling assets risks what about the as the risks that arises from the liabilities side we can say that withdraw risks represented by the depositors desire to withdraw their deposits for example current deposit saving deposits or any other type of money depositing service offered by the bank before the due date so these depositors these depositors desire to withdraw their deposits before the due date like for example what many depositors in coronavirus crisis desire to do and this is why central bank and commercial banks put limits to the daily and monthly withdrawal they put limits to the daily and monthly withdrawal because if they didn't do that they would face withdrawal risks so withdrawal risks again represented by the depositors desire to withdraw their deposits before the due date any types of deposits current deposits saving deposits or any other type of money depositing service offered by the bank and the problem and the risk here is that the bank may be unwilling and unable to do so for all the depositors at the same time the problem is not because the depositors desire to withdraw their money before the due date it's not a problem when one or two or ten did that it's a problem and a risk when many depositors want to do the same at the same time so the bank here is unwilling and unable to do so for all the depositors at the same time that will harm the bank's liquidity position that will harm the bank liquidity position so the bank may face a decreasing in their planned profit or going bankrupt and being liquidated if this 
crisis or risk exists and continued for a long time. So, withdrawal risks may cause a higher risk for the bank, a bankrupt, or being liquidated. The other type of risks that arise from liability side is the financing risk. Financing risks arises at several forms. Okay? Financing risks arises at several forms. It's not one form or two. There are many. One of them is when the bank doesn't have the ability to pay its due to the depositors or in the event that the bank doesn't have enough cash inflows that allows him to lend to investors or to invest himself okay so financing risks arises at several forms. One of them is when the bank doesn't have the ability to pay its due to the depositors. Maybe it happened for the bank in the event when it doesn't have enough cash inflows. How he is facing, how the bank is facing a cash inflows. A problem in the cash inflows. A decreasing cash inflows may occur for many reasons. Mainly because the bank cannot attract enough new customers. If the bank is not a great borrower, because we've mentioned that before in chapter 1, the bank is a borrower before it's a lender. If the bank is not a good borrower, he is not offering a good deposit services he will not be able to attract enough new customers so he is going to face a financing risk okay so shortly financing risk we are speaking about the bank is not having enough cash inflows the bank is not attracting enough new customers the bank is not able to pay its the depositors dues the bank in this case will not be able to lend investors or to invest himself most specialists refer to these two liabilities side risks the financing risk and withdrawal risks these two types of risks the financing risks and withdraw risks. Most specialists refer to these two liabilities side risks as liquidity risk. So here we spoke about three types of assets risks, credit risks, investment risks, selling assets risks, and we spoke about two types of liabilities risks, withdrawal risk and financing risks. What we've mentioned before is that each side of the budget separately has its own type of risks. If we match both assets and liabilities, different mismatch risks may occur so here we 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 spoke about different assets and liabilities risks but if we match these assets and liabilities together if we match these risks together we are speaking here about mismatch risks for example if the credit risk increased to the limit that the bank cannot pay the depositors if the credit risk increased and continued to the limit that the bank cannot pay the depositors and facing a financing risk 
you are seeing here the different colors. They are different types. This is an asset risk, while this is a liability risk. If the credit risk increased and continued to the limit that the bank cannot pay the depositors, and the bank is facing a financing risk, we are here speaking about a major risk the bank is facing and must deal with it immediately. We are speaking about a very important risk, a major risk the bank is facing and must deal with immediately, which is maturity mismatch risk. Maturity mismatch risk. So if the credit risk caused for the bank a financing risk, we are speaking about a maturity mismatch risk. We are speaking about a maturity mismatch risk because the bank is no more able to plan the cash inflows and the cash outflows so it can pay the depositors using the borrower's payments. The bank is no more able to pay the depositors money using the borrower's repayment. Okay? So the credit risk, when it caused a financing risk, we are speaking here about assets and liabilities risk together. So in asset liability management, we are naming this continued and increased risk from credit risk to financing risks. We are naming it a maturity mismatch risk. Its name is maturity mismatch risk. Let's now explain again another example about mismatch risks. This example is in the book from page 115 to 122. We've mentioned in detail that in the lecture, in the online lecture, in use, uh, when we used the Zoom program, when we used Zoom meeting, okay? And I'm only here going to shed the light on the main givens and steps. As written in the example in details in the book, National Bank of Egypt borrowed $1 billion from an American international bank. Exchange rate was 10 Egyptian pound per dollar. So National Bank of Egypt borrowed $1 billion when the exchange rate was 10 Egyptian pound per dollar. And we assume that Egypt is applying a fixed exchange rate system. We assume that Egypt is applying a fixed exchange rate system. So the date of the loan was 1st of January 2020, and the interest was 10% on the loan in dollars. Okay? The duration is one year. So National Bank of Egypt borrowed $1 billion. Interest was 10%. National Bank of Egypt borrowed this $1 billion on 1st of January 2020 for one year. When the exchange rate was fixed, 10 Egyptian pound per dollar. Assuming it's fixed, it's 10 Egyptian pound per dollar. So National Bank of Egypt will pay on 31st of December 2020. At the end of the year, after one year, it will pay $1 billion, the loan. $1 billion, the loan, plus interest. How much is the interest? 10% multiply by $1 billion. 10% multiply by $1 billion. It equals 0.1 billion, which means 100 millions. 10% multiply by 1 billion, it means 100 millions, 0.1 billion. So 1 billion plus 100 millions interest equals 1.1 billions. So National Bank of Egypt will pay the 1 billion he borrowed on 1st of January 2020, will pay it on 31st of December 2020 as 1.1 billion dollars. National Bank of Egypt converted on 1st of January 2020, 
National Bank of Egypt converted at the same time, 1st of January 2020, once he received the $1 billion, National Bank of Egypt converted it to 10 billion Egyptian pound using the exchange rate. So multiplying the dollars by the exchange rate, multiplying the dollars by the exchange rate will convert the amount in dollars to amount of Egyptian pound. So the $1 billion is converted to 10 billion Egyptian pound. Let's assume that National Bank of Egypt gives different loans with the same interest rate, assuming it's the same interest rate, 20%, 20% on Egyptian pound loans for also one year. For also one year. So National Bank of Egypt will receive on 31st of December 2020, at the end of the year, if everything was as planned, every variable, every assumption we put is as it is, National Bank of Egypt will receive the 10 billion Egyptian pound, the loan, the 10 billion Egyptian pound, the loan, plus 2 billion interest, 2 billion Egyptian pound interest. How we calculate these 2 billion? By multiplying the interest, 20, it's on Egyptian pound. It's on Egyptian pound. 20% on Egyptian pound. It's not the 10% on dollar. No, it's not the 10% on dollar. It's the 20% on Egyptian pound. 20% on Egyptian pound. The interest is 20%. Multiply by 10 billion Egyptian pound equals 2 billion Egyptian pound. It equals 12 billion, the total amount National Bank of Egypt will receive. So, National Bank of Egypt is now have to pay the loan he received. He must pay 1.1 billion. On 31st of December 2020, National Bank of Egypt must pay the 1.1 billion dollars. How he is going to do that? He will use again the exchange rate. We assumed it's fixed. He is going to use again the exchange rate we assumed it's fixed. So he will convert 11 billion Egyptian pound to 1.1 billion dollar. He will convert 11 billion Egyptian pound to 1.1 billion dollar. So he paid the loan he received from the American bank and National Bank of Egypt achieved a profit. 12 billion Egyptian pound he received. He received the 12 Egyptian pound and he used 11 billion Egyptian pound of it to convert it to dollars to pay the loan. So the result is 1 billion Egyptian pound as a profit. 12 minus 11 equals 1 billion Egyptian pound as a profit. This was according to Many assumptions, the standard situation. It's the standard situation. What if the constant factors change it? Let's now try to change some factors. Okay? Let's try to change some factors so we can understand the mismatch risks more clear. What if the exchange rate ex change it? What if the exchange rate changed it? Because actually, we are not applying a fixed exchange rate system. We are applying a free-floating a free floating exchange rate system. So if the exchange rate increased to 10.25 Egyptian pound per dollar, National Bank now will not convert as previously only 11 it will convert 11.275. It will convert more amount of Egyptian pounds. National Bank of Egypt will convert 10.275 billion Egyptian pounds to 1.1 billion dollars. This means that the profit will decrease. The profit will decrease. 12 minus 11.275 billion Egyptian pounds equals 725. When the exchange rate increased from 10 
to 10.25, the profit decreased from 1 billion to 725 million Egyptian pound. The higher the exchange rate, the lower the profit National Bank will achieve. The higher the exchange rate, the lower the profits National Bank of Egypt will achieve. What if the exchange rate keeps increasing? What if the exchange rate keeps increasing? For example, as written in the book, okay, and it reaches 10.91, as written in the book, if it reaches 10.91, in this case, National Bank of Egypt will have to convert all the 12 billion Egyptian pound, all the 12 billion Egyptian pound to repay the 1.1 billion dollar. And in this case, National Bank of Egypt will achieve loss, will achieve loss. So this is the currency mismatch risks. We are not speaking about a difference in currencies. We are not speaking about that assets and liabilities are different in currencies. We are speaking about unwilling and unpredicted, unwilling and unpredicted exchanges in the exchange rate. And these changes in the exchange rate, these fluctuates in the exchange rate, may cause the bank loss. May cause the bank loss. What if another factor changes? Okay, let's try to change another factor. If some of the borrowers, if some of the Egyptian borrowers from National Bank of Egypt didn't pay on time, let's assume that the amount they didn't pay equals 2 billion Egyptian pound. At the end of the year, at 31st of December 2020, some borrowers from National Bank of Egypt didn't pay on time because of different reasons. They didn't pay amount equals 2 billion Egyptian pound. In this case, National Bank of Egypt must find another source of money, another source of finance, another source of cash in to be able to repay the 1.1 billion and also it will affect the profits of the bank. Some of these borrowers, some of these borrowers will not pay at all and these loans will end as bad debts, will end as bad debts and this will affect the bank's ability, this will affect the bank's ability to pay some other depositors. So when these borrowers didn't pay the two billion Egyptian pound, that didn't only affect the bank's ability to pay 1.1 billion dollars. It affects the bank profits. Some of these borrowers' loans end as bad debts. And the bank is now facing a financing, huh, a financing risk. It's not the bank is not able to pay some depositors their money because some Egyptian borrowers didn't pay on time. In this case, we are speaking about maturity mismatch risks. So when these borrowers didn't pay, National Bank of Egypt tries to find another source of cash in, another source of money. He is no more able to pay the 1.1 billion dollars. He may ask for a reschedule. Sorry. He may ask for a reschedule. He may not pay some depositors their, their money on time. This will affect the financing position of the bank. So we are speaking about immaturity mismatch risks. If we make the example, another factor we are going to change here. If we make the example more realistic than before, we have to know that National Bank of Egypt will not grant the 10 billion Egyptian pound with the same interest rates. Interest rate will differ according to different circumstances regulations and legal conditions. Also, National Bank of Egypt, sure, in general, is accepting different types of deposits with different interest rates. So, 
The bank here must plan carefully. The bank must plan carefully that interest gains, interest gains, interest gains are enough to cover interest payments plus other expenses. When the bank lend others, he received interest. The bank here must be sure that this interest he is going to receive, this interest he is going to receive, the interest gains are enough, are higher than the interest payments he pays for the depositors. The interest he pays for the depositors. Interest gains must be higher than the interest payments plus other expenses and costs. Otherwise, bank will face interest rate mismatch risks. If the bank didn't plan well these interest, the interest on loans, the interest on deposits, the interest on different types of loans, and the interest on different types of deposits, if the bank didn't plan that well, if the bank didn't plan that carefully, if that causes that the interest gains are not enough for the interest payments plus other expenses and costs, the bank will face interest rate mismatch risks. So here we've mentioned three types of mismatch risks, currency mismatch risks, maturity mismatch risks, and interest rate mismatch risks. In general, National Bank of Egypt may not use the 10 billion Egyptian pound to only grant loans. It may use it in different types of assets. For example, investing some of this money in some securities and bonds. Okay? And that will cause another type of risks that will be explained later, inshallah. Now, as we mentioned in the Zoom lecture, Try to follow me page by page here in the book in relationship between assets and liabilities management from page 123 to page 127. We explain some points. We explain some points. I will shed the light on them shortly. As we mentioned in page 123, that assets and liability management is closely related to risk management in banks, especially international banks. Why is that? Because that, because of that, asset liability is merging different functions and characteristics between two different departments. The risk department and the strategic planning department or the risk management and the strategic planning management so many consider that asset and liability management is so close and related to risk management why is that because asset liability management functions is about risk management not only in the short run but also in the long run and asset liability management, its functions and characteristics is between two departments in the bank, the risk management and the strategic planning management. So, assets and liabilities management, not focusing only on the short term risks, but it also focuses on the long term risks. And we have to know that asset liability management will not be able to protect the banks from 100% of the risks. It will not be able to protect the bank from 100% of the risks. Sometimes its job is to decrease the negative effect of these risks. Sometimes its main job is to decrease the negative effect of these risks. Okay. So, as we mentioned, 
from page 125 to page 127 is uh, deleted, as we mentioned in the lecture. And now about sources of international bank risks from pages 127, from pages 127 to 135, sources of international banks' risks. We've mentioned that we have internal factors and external factors. And asset liability management tries to protect the bank from the unforeseen and unplanned losses. And as we mentioned in page 128, paragraph number two, that banking risks are due to sources, are due to two sources, systematic risks and irregular risks. And we explained what's the meaning of systematic risks. They are called general risks, and they directly affect the banking system. And we've mentioned, to understand that, the example about the effect of inflation rate on real interest rate. The effect of inflation rate on real interest rate. And we've mentioned that if the bank is exposed to inflation rates, the economy in general is facing an inflation rate that will affect the bank. There is a risk here for the bank. If the customers knows that the inflation rate is higher than the interest rate, if the customer knows that the inflation rate is higher than the nominal interest rate and the real interest rate is negative, customers will no more go to the bank and deposit their money. They are going to invest their money in other types of investments. And this will cause for the bank a decreasing in the deposits. A decreasing in the deposits. And this will cause the bank a financing risk, as we mentioned before. So the bank here is exposed to systematic risk. For example, if inflation rate affects the nominal interest rate, to be a negative real interest rate, this will affect the bank negatively. And the irregular risks are different. The irregular risks are different, as we mentioned. They are regulatory and supervisory risks, instability of external factors risks competition risks, and technological development risks. We've deleted number three in page 103, the increasing size of extra budgetary assets risks. We are not going to explain or use this type of risks, and we delete it from you. As we mentioned in details in the Zoom meeting, the points explained here and relationship between asset liability management and risk management. And we explained page by page also sources of international banks' risks, and we explained it enough in Zoom meeting. I'm not going to spend more time explaining that here. And till this point, we finished chapter 3. And let me give you a little introduction about what we are going to have in chapter 4, inshallah. In chapter 4 is speaking about in general risk management. Is speaking in general about risk management. In general, all investment decisions are exposed to risk. And the outset the meaning of risk must be clarified. We can simplify risk meaning. We can simplify risk meaning in these simple words. 
it's the possibility of losing part or all. It's the possibility of losing part or all of the expected return from a specific act or decision. So the general meaning simply of risk is the possibility of losing the possibility of losing losing what part or all of the expected return from a specific act or decision we know that the risk is the necessity to choose between two or more options whose potential results are unknown so i am trying to predict and expect and analyze and study these options well so these unknown results be for me known in general the risk when i'm facing two or more options whose potential results are unknown so i use different forecasting methods different analyzing methods i study as much as I can these options so this unknown results turn into known or expected results so I am here by studying forecasting analyzing I am decreasing the risks I am decreasing the risks so these options must be analyzed and studied well we have to use an objective assessment we have to use an objective assessment so the risks decreases so in general we are speaking about that the risk is associated with a possible success and a possible loss. The more you study, the more you analyze, the more, the more you use accurate methods of forecasting, you are turning the unknown results to known results. You are converting the unknown results to known results. And here you are increasing the possibility of success than the possibilities of loss. And we have to know that in general, the higher the probability of a loss or profit, the greater the risk. Higher risk means high return. Higher risk means higher return. And if you are not studying well and analyzing well, this uh, higher return or higher profit will be a higher loss. So let's summarize again this introduction. We are speaking about the risk. What is the meaning of the risk? The risk is the possibility of losing part or all of the expected return from a specific act or decision. There is a, a possibility of losing part or all of the expected return from a specific act or decision I'm going to take. Why is that? Because I am choosing between two or more options. I am choosing between two or more options. Each option has its potential results. Each option has its potential results, but these potential results are unknown. These potential results are unknown. So I have, to, I have to use an objective assessment. I have to use an objective assessment. I have to use different forecasting and predicting and analyzing methods to convert these unknown potential results to known. So I can convert this unknown potential results to known potential results. And 
to increase the possibility of success higher than the possibility of loss. The question that arises in general is the bank's return is the bank's return is completely risk free sorry the question here is is investing in the bank is completely risk free what are the accounting or economic risks to which the decision maker can be exposed in the event of his decision to invest in the bank's deposits what's the accounting risks what's the economic risks what are the risks that banks are exposed to in general? And are international banks exposed to more or less risks? In general, international banking risks are summarized as follows. Credit risks, operating risks, legal risks, pricing risks, commitment risks, Reputational risks, country risks, currency exchange rate risks, strategic risks, electronic banking risks, management risks, risks of globalizations, and we've mentioned also another types of risks in chapter three. Okay, so kindly read these risks and prepare them till we explain them next lecture, inshallah. I hope this lecture was useful for you. As always, follow the Facebook group. Ask me whenever you need. Participate so your feedback can make the next lectures become better. My best wishes to all of you, all of you, and your great efforts with me are thankful. I am thanking you all for these efforts. أشكركم جدا أتمنى لكم كل التوفيق أتمنى لكم كل النجاح وشكر خاص جدا لكل اللي بيتعب معايا في الحضور والفهم والمذاكرة شكر خاص جدا أتمنى لكم حياة سعيدة مليئة بالحب والود والصحة والعافية أشوفكم على خير إن شاء الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته